All right, we're nearly there. We've got a couple of last things to do in the final challenge to make this a, a fully functional game. So what we're going to need to do, uh, first of all, is make sure that this only repeats a certain number of times rather than forever. So if we take the control and we choose the repeat number, so what I'm going to do is just take out everything from here, um, remove the forever and put the repeat in. And um, I'm going to leave this as a low number because I don't want to test it. I don't want to go through 20 times. Um, and then I'm going to take everything and put it back into the repeat. So I've left this at three for now. And um, what we also need to do is we need to um, make sure that the score changes as we go through. So right now the um, the score doesn't change. It starts uh, up here and we reset it to zero. So under, under data here, we need to find the correct place for adding one onto the score. So obviously we want to change score by one only when we get the correct answer. So inside this if block right here is when we want um, the, the score to go up and we don't want it to go up here. What we do want here is to put the correct answer out. Um, so we're just going to do that. It's nice and simple. We are going to uh, go to the say. Um, we're going to put that down here after we've thought for a couple of seconds. We're going to say something. Now we've got a join um, over here and that's a, a reasonably simple way of doing it. If we multiply those two things together anyway, so inside the operator, um, we should be able to take the data of random one multiplied by random two, just like we did earlier. And um, we're going to take that and say that. Um, now, if we just do that, it's going to pop out a number. Um, so it might be better to give our user a bit of a chance. Um, if we join um, this together, so if we type in, sorry, it was, and then we use this multiplication as the second part of the string, and we put that into there. So we'll say that for two seconds. Um, and the last thing would be when we're completely finished, um, we need to put out the score so we can tell them what they got. So again, we're going to be using um, another say. Um, so we take say and chuck it right at the bottom here when they're completely finished. And again, we'll do exactly the same thing as we did. We'll join together a couple of strings. So um, we're going to put in there. I'm going to say final score was, and then we're going to put in the variable that we had over here, which was score as the end. Um, we'll maybe say this one for a few more than uh, two seconds because it's kind of the end. Um, so once again, you check your code. So four times seven, check in the wrong answer. There you go. And two times two, check in a correct answer. Tells me I'm correct. And I only need to get one more wrong. So It'll tell me it's wrong, and then the score should be one, and it'll tell me that the final score was one. Um, the game's pretty much complete once you've changed this up to 20, which was in the brief. And that brings me on to the last point, does it meet the brief? So um, fill out the rest of your document, ask the questions, have you managed to complete everything that was required of you from the brief? And then if you've managed to do that, then what could we do to make it better? In agile software development you don't just finish when you think you finished you look to see if there's any further improvements so this is currently a, a prototype it's a functional uh, start but it could be better and, uh, and we all know it could be better so what changes would you make if you wanted to make it better and go ahead feel free if you want to go and try and implement some of those changes go ahead and try good luck <laughs>